Hi everyone, I'm Jillian Lopez. I'm Miranda Lopez. And we are the, the Social, Social Sisters. Sisters. And we welcome everyone to join our family. We invite you all to sit back, get comfy, and jump into the hot seat. The hot seat being our teeny tiny cute couch. So let's get social. <laughs> All right, I'm so excited for you guys to meet today's guest. Everyone say hello to Justin Blum of Raw Fitness. Justin, you have built quite the fitness empire here in Las Vegas. You have multiple locations of Raw Fitness across the city and also across the country you're franchising. You've done some incredible work here. And when people look at you, I'm sure they see you know a fit guy with the muscles and successful. And while all of those things are true, there's a lot more going on behind those those muscles that you have. So you've had quite the journey to get where you are today. And obviously no one tells your story better than you do. So let's start from the beginning. Let's take me back to your family and tell me all about young Justin. Cool, all right. Uh, so young Justin, I was born and raised in Vegas. So I'm a native here, not, not a lot of us are, but uh, born and raised in Vegas. And I guess I, um, I had kind of a rocky upbringing, we'll call it. Um, we can start with my parents both divorced when I was seven years old. I have a younger sister, she was five. And I think that's kind of where it started. So, you know, a lot of people have unfortunate circumstances in their family where their parents like split up. Mine was a little interesting because my mother left and my father was the, the type of guy who I guess he was probably so in love with my mother that when she left, he just fell into a whole state of depression, like pretty bad, which meant just like not talking to his kids, talking to us, but just not there. That happened when I was seven. Um, and I guess that's when I started to become rebellious against everything. I went to a school called Matt Kelly. The school kind of changed my life. I think it opened my eyes to a different, um, a different type of lifestyle than I was used to. Um, and I had no, I had parents, but I didn't have anybody like watching me, right? I was just able to do whatever I want. Mom was gone, dad didn't care too much. Um, so there were many times where I would not catch the bus to go home and I would just hang out in the neighborhood, Lake Mead and Jay. We used to do stuff at uh, Doolittle. So I learned how to step at a young age at Doolittle. Um, I, and I just, from there, I just started kind of what I call running the streets. You know, it was, the streets were showing me more love and, you know, just, they cared more. They were talking more than I was getting at home. So I would rather be there than, you know, kind of go home. I tell people there were two real big years in my life that changed me. My father passed away. Uh, he was very overweight. Um, he had a lot of heart problems. He, we, we, my sister and I say he ate himself to death. Like it's one of those stories and you know, we'll get into why I own raw fitness now, right? So he passed away when I was in my senior year of high school um, and he left an insurance policy in my mother's name for his kids, his, his life insurance. Well, my mom gave me the entire thing. So without being intelligent about it or doing something smart with the money, she gave a, I think I was just 18 at the time, she gave an 18 year old $200,000 who was running the streets and smoking weed and, and just not doing anything I was supposed to be doing. Without getting into too much of detail about my mom, um, she, had, she had issues with uh, substance abuse. She, had, she just had a lot going on. She was doing all kinds of stuff. Um, she was the hopeless romantic that wanted to find love with every person she talked to. Um, and I don't think I understood any of that until I got a little bit older, but I had come back from California and I had nowhere to go except my mom. Everybody I knew from high school had moved on. They either had jobs or they had moved to where they were gonna go to college. And uh, when I found my mom, she was living in a trailer park. So I was like, well, I guess that's where I'm going. Um, I went, I lived with my mom in a trailer park. I didn't have a job and I didn't have much of an education. I was, I was a hustler. I was just always into trouble, always into doing something to make some money. And inside that trailer park is where I got introduced to methamphetamine. So 
Um, from there on, I just, I started using it. And like you said, it becomes very, very dark. Uh, and I mean that whereas with that world, especially, you get to a point after a very short period of time where you can't live without it and you will do anything for it. I mean, I would go in and, and, and steal my mom's TV so I could get rid of it for some, for some drugs. I mean, stuff like that. Um, it, it's just that that world is just very dark. So me being the type of kid I was growing up, like I was a hustler. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I'm doing this. How do I get more of this stuff? You know, could I, could I take, you know, my parents' stuff and sell it? Could I sell this? Could I do this? Could I do that? You know, so I started getting a little too involved with it. Um, I was around a lot of drug sales uh, in the past. Um, I was around even deeper stuff than that. Uh, and I just got really consumed with it. And it just became my world from the minute I could wake up. And I mean that because I couldn't, there were times where I couldn't get out of bed unless somebody would bring me, like you physically are just there and you're like, I'm not moving until I can smoke something. It's, it's, it's so hard to explain, but it's like, it's terrible. From that moment then, would you say that you continued down kind of a negative path or did you see some light and try to work towards the positive path instead? Yeah, no light at all. <laughs> there was, there yeah. was no, it's very, very hard. This is why I, I, now I give time to try to help people in those situations because um, there's no light for a lot of people. It's very, very difficult. So obviously I used to run from the cops a lot. Um, when you're in drugs and you have drugs on you and the cops pull you over, you don't want them to catch you. So I used to run from them a lot, daily. Um, and uh, I used to steal a lot of things from stores, right? I just didn't want to spend any money, didn't want to do any of that stuff. Um, one day I went in and I stole something from a store and when I came back out, uh, there were 12 or 13 patrol cars and two detective cars waiting for me. And they were there waiting for me um, because I had previously stolen from that store and got physical with some people uh, on the way out. And they remembered me when I walked into that store again to steal stuff. They're like, I oh, remember that guy. We'll just call the cops. You know, that's how much I was thinking, right? Uh, so detectives came up to me and you know they grabbed me and uh, I went to jail. I went to jail, yeah. So aside from that one moment and all these things running through your head, looking back now, how, how would you say going to, going to jail has changed saved my your life. life? Saved your life. Saved Not my life. It was, it. it was the first part that saved my life and then we'll get into the, the part that kept me saved, I guess. Uh, it, it absolutely saved my life. It absolutely saved my life because it's very difficult to come out of that world. What really flipped the switch to make you want more and to do more? For me, it was when Austin was born. So I met Austin's mom while I was still in the halfway house. I had been locked away for a little while. She was the first girl that I had met. You know, she was nice and she was beautiful and she got pregnant very quickly. Um, we, I had Austin in 2008 and um, I was still working construction. So I had just gotten the ankle bracelet off. I, we had Austin. Um, I was able to buy a house at that point because I had, I had been doing well in, in my current job. And uh, when he was born, it was just, uh, that's why I say like the first thing was prison and the second thing was Austin because I vowed to never let him go through what I went through to be a much better father than my father was, to be a, just a much better parent than what I had learned growing up. I would be there for him for everything. This was my life after Austin was born. I would go to work, um, I would leave work and I'd go to LVAC to work out, right? I was just in there moaning and grunting and being one of those guys thinking I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. I'd go home, I'd have some alcohol, eat bad food and wake up and that was my routine um, until I met Lisa. So I was sitting there one day and um, I was lifting some weights and I was grunting and I was doing stuff and she came by me and she's like, hey, uh, she was a trainer there. Um, and she came by and she goes, hey, I see you here all the time. And uh, I just, I see you working really hard. I just haven't seen you get any results. And I was like, yo, that wasn't very nice. But she was very blunt about it, but very nice about it. 
And uh, she actually corrected a couple things that I was doing. And I woke up the next day really sore. And I was like, man, that's an ego punch when a 115 pound, you know, girl comes up to you and you're 245 and you think you know everything and you do what she advises you and you're like, oh, you know, it was like, a, shit, I thought I know what I was doing. It was just an ego punch because I thought I knew what I was doing. And you know, here comes this, this trainer and I didn't, right? So I, I hired her the next day. I was like, do you train fat guys? I see who you train and they're all beautiful, but I'm not, so can you help me? Um, and she did. And this was, again, this was now 2009, the beginning of 2009. So Austin was born in September of 08. Uh, I met Lisa probably a month after Austin was born when I was in the gym. And then I tell people 2009 was the second time outside of when my father died. 2009 was the worst, but biggest growth year of my entire life. 2009, um, I lost my job. This all happened in that year. I lost my job in the construction industry because it was our, you know, when 2008 and nine here in Vegas, that was our, I mean, it was, the whole economy crashed, right? And construction took the worst and Vegas took the worst of that. So I lost my job and within a couple months, um, Austin's mom and I split up and uh, she moved out of the state. So it was, it was an interesting year for me. Uh, I had become a single father of a, a, a baby that I was probably not capable of taking care of. I mean, I'd only been out of jail for a couple years and prior to that, I was just uh, um, a kid from the street, you know? Uh, and I didn't have a job now. So I was jobless and a single father and no clue what I was gonna do, none. The only thing I thought of was like, okay, should I try to find another job where I can make some money or follow what I'm passionate about? The only thing I enjoyed doing was going to the gym. I was changing, I love seeing all the people around me change. So I went to Lisa and I'm like, hey, I've decided that, uh, this is before I told Lisa that I had lost my job. She was my trainer. I was running out of money to pay her. I was like, uh, I decided I'm gonna be a trainer and follow you and, um, and follow, follow what I love, follow what I'm passionate about. And she's like, okay. I can get you a certification and you can tag along and see how you like it. And that's where it all started. My fitness career started because I went to uh, Desert Gym Cats, which is a little gymnast. Yes. Yeah. So I went to Desert Gym Cats and I asked and I said, hey, I'm a personal trainer. I want to start these little group fitness things. I know that you cater to children. I can cater to their parents and give you another thing you can add to that. Uh, she's like, do you know what you're doing? And I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this for years. But you know, uh, and this is what I wanna do. I wanna use your facility. I wanna, you know, create obstacle courses. I can teach people how to lose weight and get in shape. And uh, then I worked out a deal with her. I'm like, I will pay you this much money, cap it out this much money. Um, and I'll be out of your hair before you even open. So you will make money out of this place before you even open. And she said, yes. And that's where it started. Kayla and I, we, uh, she, I had a lot of clients. She was one of our clients that went to the gym. Um, we, we weren't like dating as client and trainer, um, but she was a client. So I was, when she had started at the gym, there, it was a lot smaller. Um, there weren't a lot of people, so I knew everybody. We would keep running into each other at like parties in the same circle. I was dating, she was dating. Like it was just like that. We ran into each other, but we always had really good conversation. Um, and then, you know, one time uh, we ran into each other, we both were single and we were just, hey, you want to go out? And uh, we went out and that was, I mean, it was, it was literally like that. Just, we went out, we went out on one date and it was like, oh, we enjoy hanging out with each other. She came into my life when Austin was about three and a half-ish, three, three and a half. Um, and so Austin knows her a lot more than like he knows his mom. He knows his mom. She's in his life now. Um, but she came in and she just took the role of mom and just ran with it. Like absolutely amazing. Kayla and I had another baby because I, I should have mentioned that before. Um, so Kayla and I had a baby and he's crazy and psychotic. But yeah, he's, he's wild. He's like a miniature me. God was like, I'm just going to give you one of you and see how you handle it. Yes. Um, so, you know, 
My future is just to continue. A lot of my ambitions and the goals I had for our company um, are still the way they were before COVID. But a lot of the stuff that I've realized through what we just went through is like the support system that I have, not just with my family, but with the team that we have here. And I guess going forward, as far as my business is, I want to be able to provide an opportunity for every single person that works for me to do whatever they want within the company. And if they leave my company, that we've educated and taught them enough that they can use it for, you know, whatever the next area of life they go into. Um, and for my family, you know, I, I want to be able to provide uh, without giving. So my kids will, you know, grow and they'll have what they need, but they'll earn it. Because I think the struggles I went through, everybody goes through struggles. Everybody does things like that, just different struggles, right? So how you react to different struggles um, could be the same way I reacted to the struggles that I went through, right? Depression is depression, right? Fear is fear. Not, not knowing what's next or where you're going to get your next meal from or your client from or something like that is the same feeling for everybody. It's just, you know, different situations. I have two things that I try to live by, um, and I really try to live by those, is you got to know that your bad days are never going to last. They're just like your good days, and those don't last either. Anybody who has lived any kind of um, years in life, like outside of our children, most of them just have good days. They, they start getting sick of school, but those aren't true bad days, right? They don't know until they get older. But all of us have had good and bad, right? The bad days are just like the good days. Take advantage of the good days, um, lean into them as much as you can, appreciate them, try to slow them down, and then understand that like, when the bad days come, like they're there, they're not going anywhere, but um, they won't last forever either. They just won't. Um, the other thing is everybody falls. So the one thing I've learned is that I have time for bad moments, but I don't have time for a bad day. So things happen to us. Get in a car accident. If you're not hurt, it's a bad moment, move past it. You can't do anything about it. If you're late for something, that's fine. Every one of us go through, every one of us fall down. We all do. It seems that the faster you can learn to bounce up, like if you could turn your back and your butt into a ball and just bounce as soon as you hit the ground and, and keep walking, you will have more good days than bad days. It's when we fall down and we're like questioning ourselves. Should we be doing this? How did I get here? You know, what are people gonna think if I go this route? So those are the two things that I would suggest people try to just adapt because they, they've helped me a lot. Have time for bad moments, don't turn it into a bad day. A bad day turns into two, turns into a week, turns into a month. Before you know it, you're like, I had a bad couple years. You're not getting that back. And it becomes harder. Everything becomes harder as we get older, I think, <laughs> right? Because time shortens. Um, yeah, so those two things that I really try to live by. Yeah. Dustin, thank you so much for sharing all yeah. of it. You're an open book, and I know this will not only help people, but anyone who hears your story knows that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And I think uh, anyone who knows you is so grateful that you were able to get through that because I'm sure other people you knew who were in the same situation might not have had the same situation as you. So thank you for sharing everything yes, with and us. I think your entire story is just a testament to the fact that good things come to those who not only work hard, but also deserve it in the end, regardless of what their past may have been. And just seeing everything that you've overcome is truly, truly inspiring. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's been fun. Yeah, thank you. If you're interested in sharing your story, send a message to us at hello at the socialsisters.co. And tell us why you deserve a seat on our cute black and white teeny tiny couch, because in this family, there's room for everyone.